that phrase, suitable for viewing in the home, comes from the Video Recordings Bill, often called the Video Nasties Bill, which is soon expected to pass into law. This is a private member's bill in the name of Graham Bright MP, which has had strong support from the government and from all the parties. But at the very moment it's likely to become law. There are growing criticisms of the bill. Its opponents are denouncing it as bringing in state censorship of an unprecedented kind, making us into the most censored country in the Western world. I am here with Tom Hodge, who, amongst other things, has written a fabulous book. You should check it out. Uh, VHS video cover art. Uh, it, uh, it's an amazing exploration into a kind of uh, unfortunately bygone era of uh, cover art um, during its heyday. Um, but I feel that you could do probably a much better job of telling people about yourself than I could. So uh, to start things off here, as I usually do, if you could uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, a poster artist, well, graphic designer originally, uh, and then I sort of got into poster art a bit later on, because I used to work for like Sony, PlayStation, doing game covers. Uh, but then I kind of rediscovered uh, VHS covers, and it just sort of took me back to what got me into art and design in the first place, and it was as a kid recording films off TV, making my own covers for them and going down the video shop and just obsessing about films. We even used to have a mobile video van that used to come around and I just we used to get uh, like the sample covers he gave us in a box. Nobody was doing uh, like cover art when I sort of started out. So it was kind of find out what was it about this VHS style in a way uh, that I loved so much and trying to sort of catch the essence of it, the tone, the mood, the, you know, everything from the, uh, the the font and the title to treatments to the, the way the, the designs, the characters, the compositions, the colours, because it's very much a sort of montage style, uh, usually with a big hero character, very flamboyant. And I kind of learned on the job, so then I kind of, I was doing very straight design, so I kind of like learned how to illustrate again as I was kind of doing it again. and. It was, uh, yes, yeah, so I started to experiment and then I picked up a couple of jobs for re-releases because they were starting to do those. Uh, and then I basically, I did the hobo thing. I reached out to the hobo guys, did that and that kind of broke big really. Hobo with a shotgun, so right? Yeah, yes, yeah, so that was the first piece. Because I mean, they did have a poster, but it just wasn't, you know, the film was that sort of style that you got at the VHS covers, but the art just wasn't matching it and i was like i know i could do something it was all a very nothing was agreed it was just like yeah yeah go on you know love to see what you could do the audience forgive me um i i found out about tom uh through his book but yes he's a, he's an artist he is a uh graphic designer uh filmmaker so yeah it, he's more than just a just an author but um, <laughs> that's kind of <laughs> how i uh, yeah, yeah so, that, so through the back of the posters then is what i did the poster art got known for that uh and then I, you know, I'm a designer, artist, collect books a lot, and nobody really ever had done one that focused on the art of VHS. So that, you know, that was what this was really. It was celebrating the art of it, showcasing this art that is sort of lost in a way, or it was at the time, it's now video collecting sort of exploded. Uh, and also, I mean, this book's like a collection of UK VHS covers. So particularly in America, this is something that would never be seen over there what was the what was the golden era of box cover art like just the 80s in general or yeah well, it's a funny thing because when you actually look at the dates i mean vhs in the uk i don't think the americans had this problem because if you heard about the video nasties yep. thing yeah because yeah, <laughs> video nasties basically in the uk uh vhs came out really early the uk really took to vhs home entertainment uh, which is something, because you see on Facebook, a lot of Americans talk about cinema and the love of cinema and drive-ins, and we never really had them. Space being a sort of thing, I guess, with the UK, with lots of small villages rather than big uh, areas. So when VHS came along, it really opened up the home entertainment, and there was more, I think the UK, UK was like one of the biggest countries for buying video recorders, and that so really took off. So when video first came out, it was the, under the same law as books where, where there's no censorship. So, quite, so they were releasing a lot of these films, like 
obviously Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Evil Dead, uh, and they were getting people were buying them, and they were—I mean, they was. This is another side to it. They were getting like on the top of the charts. Evil Dead was beating Annie out, uh, so it was a real platform leveler. It was great, but uh, some of the newspapers and the media started to create a furore where they were like this is outrageous the kids are being exposed to these terrible things this is warping them and then the government got involved and then the police and people were raided and the films were banned so the covers on these got quite lurid and you look at stuff like uh obviously driller killer uh, where they've got the drill and the blood and stuff they got quite they were very photographic and you got a lot of nudity a lot of grotesque and they were really like the old phrase is selling the sizzle not the steak but because of the band thing, it stopped them doing these sort of lurid photo covers. They turned <laughs> for these uh, illustrated artworks to get around that. So it kind of helped in the creativity. So you could get away with a lot more lurid images if it was illustrated than as if it was photography, which is why I think a lot more of the VHS covers in America were still kind of heavily photo photograph based, whereas the UK was more illustrated. Do you feel that like with the the change to uh, like streaming and things of that nature in the video stores all just you know uh, going the way of the dinosaurs? Do do you think that not having a, a video rental um, you know store available uh, it, it, was that kind of the death of the the golden age of, of cover art? I mean, early eighties, seventies, early eighties was sort of the, the photographic video nasty stuff. Then in the eighties to nineties, early nineties. Uh, it was sort of this guy, I think it was more sort of golden art, uh, you know, illustration age. Then when we move into the sort of DVD, like the mid 90s, 2000s, that was the real shitty age, basically. <laughs> uh, because things were then knocked out on DVD were just cheap for whatever reason. I mean, maybe it was to distance themselves from the VHS releases of this illustrated art, but real bad sort of photoshopping, uh, real cheap. Again, the technology wasn't there with the Photoshop, and it was just real cheap Photoshop image. If you pick any DVD up now from that sort of period, it's just terrible cover art. Uh, they were banged out cheaply, but they still charged a lot for them. So then when we moved to the streaming, uh, yeah, no, it's hard. I mean, I've got a funny story about a job I did recently where I had the poster art, and then they were doing it for the, like, the Amazon or, well, streaming, whatever. Uh, and I was like, oh, you know, they wanted it cut down to like just his face or more or less. And I was like, well, you know, can't we make it a bit more, a bit more of a smaller poster? Because people do still put posters on the streaming site. And they're like, oh, no, no. Because when people watch them on the mobile phones, the thumbnails are so small. And I was like, man, who watches a film on a mobile phone? And also the fact that they're using that as a target audience now, that's their sort of litmus test. Can you see it on a mobile? Can you watch it on a mobile phone and view it when you're scrolling through? In the description for your book, it, you know, it states it's a world of uh, mustache, muscle men, bucks and beauties, big explosions, phallic guns, and nightmare-inducing monsters. Uh, was there something to be said about the over-the-top nature of the very late 70s and 80s in general that kind of um, allowed these covers to, to flourish? Yeah, I mean, there's something to said for men having mustaches in films, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, that was, you know... The women were always scantily clad, but so were the men, you know, the men were these sort of, which was funny because we kind of grew up and guys weren't that ripped, but, uh, you know, all the illustrations on the covers, they were always really, really stacked. And uh, yeah, they were a lot less ripped than they are today. It's also, you see it on a lot of, uh, it goes back as well to like a lot of exploitation posters from the 70s. Uh, it's probably more where it sort of originated from and sort of exploded out into more fine art. Because, you know, I mean, with the early, early 70s exploitation art, it was a little bit rougher. And then when you sort of come to the VHS cover art, you've got some real, uh, you know, just incredible artists like Renta Cassaro and Enzo Sciotti that are just fine artists in their own right that uh, turned to this. Money was obviously a thing that allowed a lot of this stuff to be produced. Are there very, uh, like, specific covers that really like stick with you that that you always think of like is there like a few examples that like that's like a standout for one reason or another uh yeah i mean it varies. i remember as a kid uh i always loved uh, graham humphrey's return of the living dead because i was 
I mean, that was just a good thing. I mean, everyone remembers this about video shops. I'm sure everyone's said this a thousand times, but growing up as kids in the 80s, we didn't have internet. We didn't have... I mean, there were fanzines, but they weren't really accessible. So you were kind of going into a video shop and, and finding things for the first time. So I kind of discovered, like, Night of the Living Dead. And uh, I think I had to ask... I, I, again, I think it was like a catalogue on the from the video shop where it just had titles, and you kind of picked what was interesting... Uh, and he ordered them in and you sort of I remember buying them for my birthday and I got Evil Dead and Night of the Living Dead never had seen them before so I mean you, you, you know imagine that hit that's why we probably I've, a lot of film people now are all like all new films are shit because as a kid you were finding this stuff that you'd never come across and it was just like wow so I remember finding Return of the Living Dead in like the ex-rental bo- uh, bucket and I was like what the hell is this you know I'd never see I didn't even know there was a sort of sequel to Night of the Living Dead at that point Obviously, then dawn and day, but uh, you know, so it was just. And he's, if you see that art, it's very punky, it's got different style, it's quite gritty, uh, which I really love, like the chunky brush strokes. Now, you had mentioned, you know, uh, unimaginative photoshopping on you know, some of the research I've done here, and we've talked about it in this, um, this back and forth here. Um, is the technology changes, uh, is that what is to blame, or did the artists just get more complacent and lazier? Well, they didn't use artists. I mean, I am digital, so I, I, I paint on a tablet in Photoshop. And it's also cheaper to produce. It's a lot less messy. You need a lot less space uh, to produce it digitally. It also it gives you the freedom, like with, uh, I mean, Colour Out of Space, I had to do a piece that would work on various formats. So I did everything and it was layered. So it had to fit for the poster, then it had to fit for a long post, then it had to be reduced down for a DVD cover. So everything had to be moved. If you, I mean, there's a lot of snob. There is a snobbery about physical art. I got, I actually got kicked out of a group because I was selling prints and it was original art. And I was like, but these are original art pieces. Uh, and it was like, oh yeah, but you do it digitally, so it's not the same as physically painting it. And it's like, yeah, but I physically paint it in Photoshop. So there is a lot, a lot of snobbery, which I always go back to, like wine. There's, you know, if wine's not cork, it doesn't have cork. People say it's, so it's not, but it's the same thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, you need that flexibility and to, to not have that does limit you for uh, artwork and pieces when you when you are doing stuff. So it wasn't thick. What really dipped it, like I said, with the DVD era was that they they didn't even use artists. It was just uh, maybe someone who they have in their office who does Photoshop, who just jobbed it. If everybody, if, you, if you're looking at Tom Hodge, which please, please do, um, you, won't, you won't regret it. It's... Yeah, I would I would Google Tom Hodge the dude designs. That's a good way to make sure that you're actually getting to his stuff because there are a couple other Tom Hodges out there. But um, when you can you discuss um, you know some of your other works like Dear God No, Father's Day, Almost Human, Wolf Cop. Yeah, I mean it starts off with panic basically. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're throwing it. What what am I going to do? Uh, but yeah, I mean you kind of a lot of the time I'm. You, I mean, it's good to, I mean, I usually always, I think there's only a few cases where I've not been able to see the film. Uh, but even in those cases, I've got an idea of what it is that you want to, what they want to convey. So the kind of the creative is led by the content, particularly for me. An interesting one that I did was for The Other Side of the Door, which was a, a good one, which I was hired by, it was one of the big ones I did for Fox at the time. Uh, and they wanted sort of some special posters that would hark back to more of a classic period. So I was coming up with Tonely, you know, trying to come up. And I think they said they wanted one and I ended up doing like 10 different concepts and they loved them and they chose three and I sort of was able to do them. And each one's kind of different and it was exploring different tones and, you know, how you want to sell the message. So it all varies. I mean, the ones I did for Paul Peter Fig, where there was Spy and the Heat, were very action-based. So that was all big guns, sort of explosions. And one was more of a sort of Bond thing. My stuff's very much changed and evolved a lot. My style's changed a lot over the years. So I was doing a lot more sort of that style. Now it's sort of moved on to pure illustration-based pieces, really. Uh, so I kind of went more seven. I think I started off quite when I did. I was very sort of influenced by seventies exploitation posters, uh, very sort of black exploitation, very heavily. Uh, then 
then it kind of progressed more into the 80s stuff and now it's sort of more sort of VHS poster but I'm kind of and now I'm doing a bit more of a modern mashup really uh, if anything I've sort of more embraced the sort of digital side with a lot of the stuff I'm doing recently can you tell us about uh, Teddy Bear's Picnic I had this sort of film idea concept I've been working on well when I did the short back in 2017 I've been working on for like six seven years and I'd sort of developed these characters and I was after a sort of I wanted to something new on zombies and I wanted a new sort of threat what would these new monsters be uh, and I wanted something that had a sort of cultural baggage I used to do film studies and the guy and the, the lecturer always used to talk about this thing called cultural baggage which is like an association with something that's culturally relevant so I wanted something that kind of was ingrained in culture and something that you could hark back to and become like a modern folk tale so I always had this thing about the teddy bears picnic song was this really old uh, it was a melody and then someone wrote some lyrics to it later on and then it's kind of became like this children's song uh, and some of the lyrics were always a bit off and it's like if you go down to the woods today you're sure of a big surprise and it's quite sweet and innocent you know today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic uh, but then it kind of got these lyrics towards the end it's like uh, you better off you better not go out today or you're safer to stay at home you better to not go alone and, and I was like well what's it really singing about so I so I was like, well, who are the bears? How did they get there? And I created these characters and this whole story. And I was signed up to a, a good producer, but they, he sort of went on hiatus and that sort of thing. And, and it was kind of disappearing. So I chose to do a proof of concept short myself. Never really done anything like that before. And uh, gathered all the bears, made all the costume. And yeah, it was it was, uh, it was about a year. It was, uh, it was good fun making all the, uh, the props and costume and realizing it and uh i know lawrence harvey who did human centipede from uh from the conventions i used to do particularly in germany uh so we became friends so he agreed to sort of play the bear because he was always i always had certain set actors that i wanted to do and lawrence has got such a great face and character it did a festival tour it did really well i did everything from fright fest in london to uh, it went to South Korea, it went to Australia, Mexico, Brazil. It did loads of places. It, did, it was really well received. Uh, so hopefully, you know, I mean, you know, hopefully if it goes out, I'd like it to pick up steam. If um, if there were three famous cover arts that, you know, somebody you know, who's 15 right now and all they've ever seen is just whatever is on, on Netflix, you know, if you said like, and you wanted to show them like, this is the best examples I can give you for whatever reason of, of cover art of, you know, that your parents were into or whatever, you know, uh, what, what three, uh, would you, would you give not to, sorry to put you on the spot there, but like, what, what are three examples that for whatever reason, nah. like, these are, these are it. I say that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a hard one. I think it, cha it does change. As time goes on, what you appreciate and more you look into it. But I think you seem to remember at the time I was there was a Burt Reynolds film called WW and the Dixie Kings, and I had the the poster to that, and uh, I was a big fan of that. And I was like, because basically it was a that was a joke really, because it was <coughs> all the thing is it's like a belt buckle, and then like you get to see the guy like Burt Reynolds basically groin, and then there's Burt Reynolds below the groin, and it was kind of a joke on that. So The Return of the Living Dead was one of my favourite ones Graham Humphreys did. I remember The Stuff, which was another Graham Humphreys one, that just disturbed me as a child. And uh, it's just, basically, it's just like, the, it's just a mouth. A uh, person green and the mouth are very wide open and all this stuff sort of just spewing out of the guy's mouth. It's not even that sort of, like, scary, but for some reason as a kid it was very... Uh... I mean, I was also very haunted by the UK one of... Uh, Black Roses, which again, it's just a very creepy monster. Uh, then you've, you know, I say there's just, there's just so many. Silk is one of my favourite ones that's in the book. It was a Rento Casaro one. Uh, it's just, it's like the perfect 80s from the typeface, which is pink. She's all in denim. It's got the sunset. It's got palm trees. Palm trees are always a plus. Uh, and she's got an M16 and shooting it, and it's just perfect. 
uh, it's the sort of thing you could wear on a t-shirt or on a skateboard it was like man you know <laughs> so that's one of my uh, that is one of my personal favourites gotcha. yeah so sorry about that that was uh, put a put a lot of pressure on you there <laughs> so, but, <laughs> um, but yeah uh, so the dude designs is, is the website um, and you know it, for talking to the audience here a little bit uh, you know he's Tom is on all the, the social medias that you can imagine. Buy prints from my website. I've also got an apparel store that I've set up now, uh, which is called uh, Dude Apparel, which is kind of doing art, clothing art, basically. So I did like a whole collection of VHS. I love VHS, obviously. Uh, and I always was like, wouldn't it be great to have like cool VHS t-shirts or video stores from back in the day? So for that, I sort of for that project i took the idea of doing uh taking names of existing video stores actually you know were about and then revisiting them creatively to create obviously more arty t-shirt wear check out his stuff uh his website social media uh you won't be disappointed and you know if you can throw down a couple of bucks to, to buy something on the site or the book vhs video cover art like couldn't hurt <laughs> so <laughs> or just watch the short and give it a thumbs up on youtube basically yeah that, yes be... and teddy <laughs> is, on, is on youtube so that's like i said five minutes and it's very good so uh definitely check that out um yeah tom thank you so much uh, i appreciate you know all of your knowledge that you were able to, to provide to us here and and i can't thank you enough for coming on well no thank you for you know having me and listening to me waffle on <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Cheers.